investigator means two things. You can be sure you'll run into trouble, and you can never be sure you can get out of it. Well, there's not much you can do about it, I guess. Except, like Julie always says... Walk softly, Peter Troy. Uh, And now, Peter Troy investigates the Wistful Witch. Julie, the girl with the warning, plays the role of secretary, coffee maker, and general all-round girl Friday in my office. And you'll meet her again. But right now, I want to introduce you to a very gifted woman. And just to keep the record straight, a very beautiful one, too. Tall and slim, with golden hair, the color of the sun shining on Lake Superior. The Canadian house, of course. Yes, Gilda's a dream. And when she dances, Marga Fontaine, Maura Shearer, and Anna Pavlova become mere shadows. Okay, so I'm no eyebrow. Beautiful, Gilda, beautiful. Boy, when you give him those old bumps and grinds. Harry, speak to the band leader. Will you play some music again? Yeah, I'll tell him, Gilda. Hello, Gilda. What are you doing here? Well, as I thought we were having dinner together after you'd finished. Who said anything about dinner? Well, I understood. I told the doorkeeper not to let you backstage anymore. Well, he tried to stop me. Would you mind getting out of here? I've got a change to make. Gilda. You're always hanging around. You make me sick. Don't say that. I'll say what I please. You can't take a hint, can you? You bore me. You know that? You bore me. You're going to be sorry you said that, Gilda. You're going to be very sorry. Oh, don't threaten me, you aging Casanova. You don't scare me one little bit. Cue music. Gilda, what's the matter? Oh, Gilda, for peace sake. Gilda? Hey, Jenny, get him to put the substitute act on. Gilda's banished. She's just plain banished. Gilda Gorday, exotic dancer supreme, is not the wistful witch referred to in the title of this saga. The letter showed up in my office the next day. Her name was Linda Giffords. She wore glasses and her hair was drawn back into a tight school mommish bun. But she was young and uh, under her rather severe exterior, I could make out a lot of charm and beauty. And one thing she couldn't disguise, even though she wore a shapeless tweed suit, was the perfection of her figure. Nor the slim elegance of her legs. What are you staring at, Mr. Troy? Uh, you, Miss Gifford, you're uh, something of an enigma. I came here to discuss my sister Gilda, Mr. Troy. Oh, yes, of course. Miss Gilda Gorday. Gilda Gifford. Gaudet is a stage name. Uh-huh. Gilda disappeared, and I want her found. Uh, Miss Gifford, the police offer an excellent service for the recovery of strained cats, dogs, and sisters. I'm aware of that. Well, then... But uh... I don't want the police brought into this. Why not? For personal reasons. Well, I'm sorry, but if I'm going to take on this case, I'm going to have to know those reasons, and a whole lot more besides. Oh, but otherwise... You have so much conscience, then. No, it's not a question of conscience, Miss Gifford question of a little thing called a Metropolitan Police License to operate. All investigators have to have them. I see. Yes, we step out of line and they take a great delight in revoking it. Oh, very well, then. Well, that's better. Gilda vanished last night from the theater. She was playing at the New Gaiety. Paris Brevities of 1962. Yeah, I've seen the show. It's uh, very nice. Bachelor affair, of course. She but... disappeared halfway through the show. They had to put on a substitute act in the second half. <laughs> but the customers are furious. She didn't leave by the stage door. The doorkeeper was there all the time. And she didn't change into her street clothes. So? Hmm. She's floating around somewhere in spangles and tights. That shouldn't make it too difficult to find. There are complications. Oh, I thought there might be. Gilda and I, though we were sisters, were very different. I've never approved of her stage career. Or of the company she keeps... Uh. She's frequently seen with a man called Max Ellerton. Mm. You've heard of him? Oh, very unpleasant gentleman. Racketeer. Somehow I have the feeling that he's responsible for her disappearance. Well, I'll tell you, anyone crosses Max, they're very liable to disappear. I- I've never been able to understand Gilda. She could virtually have her choice of men. For instance, there's Charles Lonford. Lord Lonford, sir? Mm. Oh, a wonderful man. Oh, a little older than Gilda, of course, but rich and charming. 
and influential. But she's not at all interested in him. No. She seems to prefer the riffraff. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell me, did she have any visitors last night? According to the doorkeeper, just one, Charles Lanford. Mm -hmm. But he was only with her for about five minutes. And he left. Was there any other way into the place apart from the stage door? No. Nobody saw her leave? No. Oh, we have problems, don't we? Uh, has she ever done this before? No. <laughs> All right, Miss Gifford. Now, what else have you got to tell me about Gilda? And I want a full rundown, please. Because I'm going to be very annoyed if I eventually discover that you've left anything out. <laughs> She's left me in the very devil of a pickle, Mr. Troy. Running out in the middle of the show like that. Uh-huh. Uh, there's been no sight or sound of her since? Nothing. And she has a contract here. Has the policeman informed you? Well, no. Well, why not? Well, she's only been missing for 24 hours. Ah, look, a valuable star disappears. You don't even tell the cop on the beat about it? We had instructions not to. Who from? Miss Gifford. Oh, I see. Well, she's her sister. Can I have a look at Gilda's dressing room? Certainly. It's right behind you. Has it been touched? Not to the best of my knowledge, Mr. Troy. Hello. Hello there. Who are you? I could ask you the same question. Troy. Peter Troy. One of Gilda's boyfriends? <laughs> no, sir. Like private investigator. Oh. I didn't catch uh, your name. Patsy Colligan. Third from the left and the second row of the chorus. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. A lady with the lovely uh, knees. Nice of you to notice. Are you using this dressing room, Patsy? No. Oh. You looking for something? I... I need Gilda some makeup. And you came to get a bath? Yes. Well, it looks a thing you didn't find it. I hear the place is pretty thorough going over there. I've run out and the stuff costs money. Money? That's the, I guess, five pounds would buy an awful lot of makeup, huh? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Troy. Five pounds, all you have to do to earn it is to... do a little talking. About what? About Gilda. Oh, I... And Charles Longford and Max Ellerton. Oh. Not interested? Five pounds. Six. No, oh, we're living in an era of fast inflation. Gilda was in trouble. What sort of trouble? Police trouble. Well, go on. That's all. <laughs> Not much value for six pounds, Patsy. Oh, well, maybe it wasn't police trouble. Up. Oh, uh, look, I, I don't know, Mr. Troy. Come um, now, you're not trying, Patsy. Now, I feel sure... Max! Patsy, that tummy of yours is going to get you into a whole lot of strife. I, I, I didn't tell him anything. You said Gilda was in trouble. Well, I was stringing him along, playing for time. Uh, is he dead? Probably. Did you find it? No. no I, I searched everywhere, Max. Let's get out of here. They'll hurt the short and... Not with all that racket going on out there. But someone must know he's here and about... Troy! Come on. Follow me. This way. He's not... Oh, Inspector Pete. No, the bullet's pieced his skull. He's getting in a very devil of a headache. But he'll do. See, I told you. Hey, you there. Yes, sir. You have any authority around here? I'm a stage manager. Yes, well, tell those people to get out of here and close the door behind them, will you? Mm -hmm. All right, kids, you heard the inspector. Oh, and you stay here. Oh. Pete, can you hear me? What in coronation? You very nearly cashed in your chips this time, Joy. Oh, don't I know it. Okay, what happened? Uh, I was talking to this chorus girl. <laughs> in the line of duty, Julie. She was in here searching for something. And as I was talking to her, she kept on looking over my shoulder. Oh, I didn't take any notice. Ooh, I should have done. I heard the gun go off right behind me, and... Oh, all right, then the whole world exploded in my head. There was someone else in here? Oh, there must have been. And you didn't see them? Well, if I'd seen them, I'd have ducked, believe me. Well, take it easy, Pete. Hey, you there. Oh, yes, Inspector? Any other entrance to this dressing room? Any other door? Uh, not to the best of my knowledge, Inspector. Oh, Perhaps your mystery gunman was hiding in the wardrobe over there, Troy. The wardrobe was open. There was no one in there. Troy. When it... I walked into this room, the place was empty except for the girl. Now, just a minute. What are you doing here anyway, Inspector? I called in, Pete. What? Huh? Well, the stage manager came in and found you sprawled out on the floor. He rang through to the office and the answering service gave him my number. He told me you'd been shot. Oh. I called Inspector Caswell immediately. Uh, you didn't think about calling the police direct, mister? 
Well, no. I... You know, it seems there's more than one person just a little shy of the police in this case. I had the theater's reputation to consider. Oh, great. Now, just one more thing. Do me a favor and go and find a query named uh, the Patsy Collier. Oh, but I just told the inspector. Tell him what? She's another one that's disappeared, Troy. No one's seen hide or hair of her since you came backstage. Like Gilda Gorday, she's vanished. <laughs> Two missing showgirls, a bullet that came within a millimeter of putting my lights out, and a wistful-looking woman who wore tweeds and sensible shoes. These were the main ingredients of this crazy case to date. Plus, of course, the puzzle of how that gunman got into the dressing room in the first place. Julian Inspector Caswell had arrived on the scene just about the time I was coming to. The inspector gave me that old-fashioned look when I told him that it was only Patsy Culligan in the dressing room when I entered. But he decided to humor me. He left the dressing room, went with the stage manager to the telephone to call some specialists from Scotland Yard to search the place. Pete, maybe the bullet came through the window. The gun was fired in this room and from right behind me. But how could Look, that help be... me get in the feet, Julie. I want to give this place a quick once-over before Caswell gets back with his boys. Oh, hey. Ooh, yeah. Well, I think you should go home and rest. Later. I don't like puzzles, honey bun, and this is a Lulu. Well, the police will now, find it. Now, that gunman had to get into the room from somewhere behind me. I was standing uh, about here. Mm. Patsy was right in front of me. Now, let's have a look around. Now, the wardrobe. Empty. The door was open. See that basket over there in the corner? Mm. That's big enough for a man to hide in, wouldn't you say? Oh, Pete, maybe he was hiding in there, but no one saw him or the girl leave this dressing room. Mm. <laughs> You're right. Hey, wait a minute. Mm. Now, that's interesting. Oh, what's it? Now, look, clearing down there. Green Spangle? Yeah. And Patsy Culligan was wearing a costume covered in green spangles. Oh, listen, Pete. If she got in there with a the gunman, it'd be a bit of a tight squeeze, wouldn't it? Maybe. There's something cockeyed here. Now, uh, just supposing this basket had a false bottom, honey, but... Here we are. See what I mean? A trap door. Well, of course, it's the only answer. <laughs> I was a dope not to think about it before. It's a variety theater. Well, you know... Uh... Disappearing acts and all that. Oh. oh, Pete, you're not going down there. Well, I'm just going to have a look, see. Oh, well, I'm coming too. Oh, wait a minute. Get... Oh, all right. Take it carefully. Uh-huh. Now you stay close. There's very little light down here. Oh. Oh, don't worry about that. I also use these passages as emergency fire exits from the stage. In the old days, you had to have them to conform with fire regulations. It's eerie, isn't it? Sure is. Let's get some light on the subject. Yeah. Hmm, that's better. Oh, Pete, hmm? there's a switch over on that wall beside you. Oh, good, I get that. Oh, I hate this place. Oh, there we are. Oh, oh, what the? There's a corner. A body. There we are, honey bun. Oh. Pete, who is it? Third from the left, second row of the chorus. Patsy Culligan. carried on, you'd think we were responsible for the poor girl's death. Mm. <clears throat> he always did have a nasty, suspicious mind. Well, what happens now, Pete? Right this very minute? Uh, we wait, honey, man. For what? You mean for who? I want to have a chat to that stage manager. What's her name? Oh, Keaton. Yeah. She'll be out in a minute. You think he knows something? He knows more than he's told us or the police. Good night, Joe. Make sure you lock up after the police leave. Get in the car. <gasps> Into the car. Oh, now, wait a minute. There's yourself. Another policeman, Keaton. I don't have to be careful how I treat us. Suspects? Come on, in the back seat. Yeah. All right, Julie. Drive around the block a couple of times. I protest. Now, listen, Buster. I got a splitting headache and my temper's a little frayed, to say the least. You're going to do some talking. You're not going to stop till I've heard enough. Look, I told the police everything I know. Oh, no, you didn't. But, Mr. You're the stage manager of that theater, right? Well, you'd know the place inside out. You know about that trap door, the entrance to it through the wicker basket. So it was no mystery to you how Gilda disappeared. Well, I... You've known all about the vanishing gunman, too. But you kept your mouth shut. Well, I want to know why. 
And I tell you, if I don't get my answers, Keaton, I'm going to tell Julie to step on the accelerator. And then when the speedometer reaches around about 50, I'm going to open this door and kick you out. Now you talk. <laughs> well, all right. All right. Well, the whole business is a mess. And I don't know all the answers. I'll do your best. Well, y- yes, I did know about that trap door. But I didn't dare tell the police. You see, Max Ellison's mixed up in all this. Well, I'll keep going. You haven't told me anything I don't know yet. Patsy Colligan used to be his girlfriend. What about Gilda Corday? Oh, yes, it was before Gilda came onto the scene. But the whole trouble was... Well, Gilda's married. Married? To whom? Charles Lanford. Huh? Well, that's right. It's a very closely guarded secret. Max Ellett know about this? Yes. Didn't seem to worry him. But then the marriage seemed to go on the rocks. Gilda's a volatile girl, and Lanford's a bit of an old stick in the mud. Uh, why was there all this secrecy about the marriage? Because of Lord Lanford. He threatened to cut Charles out of his will if he married Gilda. He didn't approve of showgirls. Mm. Slowly but surely, things are beginning to add up. Anyway, Gilda left orders with the stage doorkeeper not to let Charles in. And for some reason, that made Max Allerton angry. Lord Lansford's dead now, isn't he? He died last week. His son inherited the Lansford fortune. Mm. Have you got any idea what Patsy was looking for in Gilda's dressing room this evening? I don't know. But, but I could hazard a guess. I'd say it was Gilda's marriage line. What, she knew Gilda was married too? Yes. And she was really sore at being dissed by Max. Now, if she could have got those marriage lines... She could use them as a lever to pry Max away from Gilda. Yeah, something like that. Tell me, where does Max Ellerton hang out, Keaton? What? Oh, now, listen. Step I... on the gas pedal, Julie. Well, right. Well, I, I... Where does he hang out, Keaton? Well, look, if I was to tell you that, Max would kill me. What? All right. All right. I'll tell you. He's, uh... He's got a hideaway in Shoreditch. The address... Off Shoreditch High Street. 23 Ebor Street. Okay, slow down, Julie. Uh, Stop anywhere around here. Troy, Troy, listen. I... Quiet. <laughs> okay, it... out. Oh, Come on, out. All right, all right. But Troy, Troy, don't tell Max I gave out his address. For the love of mercy, don't tell him. Where's your now, Pete? 23 Ebor Street, Shoreditch. Your mind, Linda, I don't know where Gilda is. You're a poor liar, Max. You think I'd double-cross you? I know you would. But you'll only do it this once. Linda, put that gun away. Where's Gilda? Answer me, Max. I'm not afraid to pull this trigger, and you know it. Okay, okay, relax. Gilda's safe. She's at my place in Maidstone. Took her there the night before last. Why? Because she was backing out of the deal, Linda, that's why. She was married to Lanford. Oh, yes, but that wasn't going to last much longer. She'd already separated from him, and she'd lodged divorce papers with a lawyer. She wasn't going to go through with it. Ah, that little fool. After all our careful planning. She knew that as soon as Lord Lanford died, we were going to fix Charles. We could have done it any time now. And the Lanford fortune would have come straight to her as his next of kin. Three quarters of a million pounds. Well, she didn't like the idea of us killing him. So I had to grab her before she went through with the divorce. For the marriage line. If I couldn't find them. And I caught Patsy Colligan hunting for them, too. Patsy would have bound the gas, Linda. All right, all right. Yes, and I've got a bone to pick with you. What was the idea of putting that private eye on the trail? I wanted to know where you'd taken Gilda. He's got a reputation for hunting down missing people. Yes, and he would have hunted me down in the process. I ought to... You're right about that, Max. What's it? Now, don't reach for a gun, Max. Like Linda, I've got no compunction about pulling the trigger on this one. And whilst we're about it, I'd feel a whole lot better if you dropped that cute little automatic, Linda. Oh, that's better. He heard everything. Yeah, that's right. I found nobody at home, Max. I let myself in. <laughs> I've got one of the most comprehensive sets of skeleton keys in London. Troy. I told you I'd discover if you left anything out, Linda. Uh, Troy, I- I'll make a deal with you. I'd sooner make a deal with a death adder, Miss Gifford. Tell me, did you introduce your sister to Lanford? Oh, I guess you did. Remember I said you were an enigma? What happened to the tweeds and the sensible shoes, Linda? You know... You know what made me think twice about you? <laughs> what? Spectacles, mossy hairdo, cotton stockings, no makeup. Yet you were wearing an expensive perfume called Exotique. Now, that was the enigma. 
It's a very glamorous perfume. Doesn't go with tweets. Troy, you never get out of here alive. This is my territory. Oh, and just for the record, Linda, Max was pulling the old double cross. Gilda's not down in Maidstone. She's bound to gag in the next room. Why, you... Troy, that'll be my friend. Sorry to disillusion you, old man, but that'll be the police. Sent my secretary for him about 15 minutes ago. Okay, Julie, bring in the boys. All right, Alan, this is it. The house is surrounded. Don't try anything. You see, Max? Are you all right? <laughs> sure, I'm all right. Oh, you had me worried, Steve. Oh, that's nice. I like you to worry, honey bun. But I wouldn't worry half so much if you just walk softly, Peter Troy. simple one brought down to its bare essentials. Linda Gifford introduced her sister to Charles Lonford, heir to the Lonford fortune. On the firm went fell for Gilda hook, line, and sinker, as Linda knew he would. And that made Gilda next in line for the Lonford thousands, once the old man died, which he did of natural causes. As for Charles, he was marked down for murder, and that's why Linda called in a thug like Max Ellerton. He would have been the one to plan Charles' sudden demise. But then Gilda got a fit of conscience and Max tried to double-cross. Linda got worried and called me in. But uh, all I was supposed to do was to locate Gilda, nothing more. However, when you buy service from the Troy agency, we got a whole hog. <laughs> you know, I won't forget Linda. She had a wistful smile, but cold, cold eyes, as I remember. <laughs> 